Plymouth Rock, symbol of new world freedom, symbol of a nation's beginning, symbol of New England and its glorious romantic history and colorful American tradition. With freedom and thanksgiving in their hearts, these our forefathers worked, worshiped, and governed, putting their trust in their God, their hope in the land. The pilgrim of New England lived and died, cultivating the seed of American progress and freedom. Now they sleep, the heroes who led America in its first strong steps. Burial Hill, Saturn Watchtower, seems a fitting and symbolic resting place. American culture found its beginning on Boston's Beacon Hill, one of the many historic landmarks in old Boston and old New England. True Americans thrill as they gaze at the belfry in the old North Church in Boston, almost unchanged. It stands a constant reminder of the signal that sent Paul Revere galloping into the night, calling colonial America to arms. The cry of the spirit of Lexington stills to resound in the air. Stand your ground, don't fire unless fired upon. But if they mean to have war, let it begin here. At Concord too, Lexington and Concord, one feels the spirit of the Minutemen who bravely answered the call to hold a bridge, defend an ideal, a nation, echoes of the shot heard round the world. Steeped in early American tradition is Bunker Hill. With powder and ball, free and independent Americans stood here and proved that they could and would win the right to rule themselves. Today, the monument of Bunker Hill, gloriously silhouetted against the sky, is an everlasting reminder of the sacrifices and victories on the far-flung battle lines of Bennington, of Lexington, of New England. Throughout the entire length and breadth of New England stand historic landmarks, inspiring links, strong links that weld the splendid traditions of early America to the customs of today. In Charleston Navy Yard, Boston Harbor, emblematic of American freedom of the seas, rests old Ironsides, majestically, basking in the glory of her victory. Silent now are the guns that once roared death to America's enemies of the deep and the pirates of Barbary Coast. Direct descendants of the Donald McKay, the Lightning, the Red Jacket, famed New England clipper ships, are the crafts that ply New England harbors today. Direct descendants, too, are the skilled New England craftsmen who build them and the hardy seamen who sail them. True adventurers of the sea, the whaling ships out of Nantucket, Sconset, and New Bedford. For months, even years at a time, the whalers pursued the giants of the deep in the South Atlantic, the Arctic, the Pacific, and the Antarctic. Then, guided by the mariner's spirit compass, so placed that it could be read both from the pilot house and the captain's quarters below deck, they sailed for harbor, home, and loved ones. For years, for generations, from yesterday to today, men of New England have gone down to the sea in ships. Gloucester and Gloucester Harbor look much the same now as in yesteryear. From off the coast of Maine, from off the Grand Banks of Newfoundland, Gloucester men bring thousands of tons of deep sea fish, braving countless dangers so that the markets of America may be filled. Miles of drying codfish flakes, Giant reels of nets, carefully dried, repaired, and inspected, tell the vivid story of the fascinating Gloucester life. In New England, perhaps more so than anywhere in the land, the old blends with the new to kindle a spirit of its own. At East Ham on Cape Cod stands the oldest of New England's mills, its stone still grinding, grinding the hard corn. And just as in the days of old, oxen are used to help till the rich New England soil. From the colored cliffs of Gay Head on Martha's Vineyard, below Cape Cod, come pigment and clay. Pigment and clay that are still used by the Indians today as they carry on the potter's art of their ancestors. On Cape Cod, too, at the famous sandwich glass factory, the craftsmanship of the early settlers is preserved. The last of the skilled artisans admire their unrivaled handiwork as they did in the days when they blew the fine lace-like patterns. Along the coast of New England live men whose love for the sea will never die. Into willing ears they pour tales, yarns of the sea. They make history real, 
vivid with stories of shipwreck and adventure, reliving the legends of old New England seamen. Some of these fascinating yarns have been written down, preserved in books, enchanting books of New England. Writers like Joseph C. Lincoln capture in their pages the life and romance of Cape Cod with its true characters. Tales of Captain Neary and of Shavings. Shavings who has become an American legend across the continent. Shavings and his colorful shop. Romance, Cape Cod. Off the southeastern coast of Cape Cod, grim modern steamers pass the cross rip. One of the many famous and romantic lightships, Brenton Reef, Pollock Rip, Stone Horse Shoal, and Handkerchief, all guardians of the sea. Unique even for Nantucket, the Wharf Rat Club. Exclusive yet not exclusive. This carefree club has no officers, no meetings, no minutes, but hundreds of members. It is a club deep in historic atmosphere. Two years ago, old Nantucket was the far off land that the Indians called it. But even though today fast steamers bring it near, it still retains its quaint old atmosphere. Almost unchanged stand the old shops and homes along cobblestoned Main Street that leads on down to the Pacific Club, where only those who had sailed the Pacific could belong. Here the old whalers would gather and unfold tales of adventure on the high seas. Adventure, while anxious wives paced widow's walk, scanning the horizon, watching the sea, waiting for a glimpse of a sail that would mean their men were safely home again. The captains, anxious too for the sight of their loved ones, the warmth of the fireside, guided their creaking ships past the ever-present lighthouses safely into port. Today as yesterday, these sentinels of safety and gladness to the hearts of the homing mariners. On the very tip of Cape Cod stands Provincetown and its fishing industry that has thrived since the days of the colony. Its typical New England atmosphere, its shifting sand dunes, quaint shops and homes have attracted to Provincetown a colony of artists. Provincetown still cherishes its old town crier Ringing his bell, he calls out vital news of the day. In the Coffin House, oldest home on Nantucket, colonial traditions are preserved as safely as the embedded horseshoe in the chimney. Its sturdy, primitive, but comfortable interior shows how early America lived. Protected from the Indians and storms that swept the island, the housewife carded her wool and wove it into warm clothing for her husband and children. There is hardly an old house in New England where historical relics and antiques are not to be found. Life-size figures created in wax lend a picturesque atmosphere in the authentic historic settings. Even in the shops, the treasures of the old handicraftsmen lie side by side with the new. New England treasures the history that lives in her antiques, antiques that reveal the customs of her ever-present past. Although deeply rooted in the old world, the architecture or styling of the New England homes is distinctly colonial. The beautifully paneled doors with their artistic fans and hardware suggest a pleasant welcome, typical of New England friendliness. Interesting old designs on the knockers add much to the home-like appearance of New England. At Sconset, on Nantucket, summer visitors enjoy the sense of serenity and peace in the lovely flower gardens that sway in the cool breezes around the homes of the old fishermen. In these historical states, one finds the perfect combination of the old and the new. Modern up-to-date Emily Post, renowned as an authority on modern manners, has made New England a background for her work. The Skipper. One of the unusual havens for hungry travelers in New England is filled with table treasures that are served in the delightfully inviting manner. New England's distinctive dishes stimulate the appetite. Rhode Island Johnny Cake, Cape Cod Scallops, Boston Baked Beans and Brown Bread, Fish Chowder, Indian Pudding, Salmon from Maine, Connecticut River Shad Roll, Vermont Maple Syrup, New England Boiled Dinners and Steamed Clams are famous everywhere. And famous too are the lobster fleets of New England. For ever since the first lobster crawled into a pot, lobster men have done their share to supply their popular cooks with this delicate food of the sea. 
Hugo, one of the famous and popular chefs, is master of his own eating place and an artist at pleasing the palate. Because every section of New England claims for its own some celebrated dish, so in the diners and grills of the modern trains speeding into New England, these dishes are frequently served. Clean, cool, air-conditioned to comfort, these up-to-the-minute trains skim over the smooth rails as the exhilarating panorama of the New England countryside glides by the window. Variety, beauty, and tradition constantly unfolding to delight the traveler. The natural beauty of the ocean, the beaches, and the rugged shore of Newport in Rhode Island makes this spot a perfect setting for the marble mansions and formal gardens, the handsome homes of the Astors, the Vanderbilts, and the Belmonts. These families, among others, that have been in the public eye for generations, dwell at Newport, near the celebrated Eight Mile Cliff Walk, a walk that guides the traveler to the best of beauty spots, the magnificent dwellings with their gardens running down to the sea, between Boston and Cambridge flows the Charles River. Near the bank on the Cambridge side stands Harvard University, oldest of American colleges. From its portals came young men to lead young America in law, in letters, in art, and in medicine. Yale yet New Haven, Connecticut. Its Gothic towers are steeped in the traditions of New England education. From New England schools like these came great minds. The everlasting writings of Hawthorne, Thoreau, Emerson, and Holmes. Following the path blazed by Copley and his contemporaries came Julius Delbos. His canvas creations of the waterfronts and picturesque towns are found among the many outdoor exhibitions of New England painting. The beauty of New England, its genuine quaintness, attracts artists from the far corners of the world. They come painting on canvas, the individuality of Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, Provincetown, and the rugged coast of Maine. Still more wonderful pictures are framed by the windows of the trains as they follow the beautiful New England shoreline. Scenes ever changing, ever beautiful. Miles of white sand, miles of surf alternating with other miles of wave-carved coastline. And over it all, the New England sun shines for long hours on swimmers basking in the sheltered bays, or on those who enjoy a spicy, invigorating romp in the smashing surf of the open beaches. The full of the sea, the peaceful waters of Buzzards Bay and Casco Bay, and of Marblehead and Bar Harbor entice the traveler to go aboard for a sail in a spanking breeze, or for a swift dash in a powerboat. New England water sports against a background that cannot be matched, sports in a setting that is truly beautiful. New England's coastline is dented with a hundred harbors. On these, young America learns to sail, learns to love the water of its coast, to know the waters in the harbors and headlands. North to south, the harbors are filled with the keen rivalry of yacht clubs, for young and old. On racing days, the waters are cut by the plows of sleek catches and sloops and yawls and catboats. Small crafts of every class skim over the waters of the inlets all during the long summer racing season in a sport of salt spray and thrill, making these harbors the social centers of a hundred New England communities. Down at Newport, navigation and deep water sailing, dangerous to be sure, but a grand thrilling sport. From the very water's edge to the deepest interior, land sports are in full swing. Away from the harbors, sport has a background of hills, woods, and trim pasture land. Within easy reach of New York, beckon the interior playgrounds of New England, the matchless Berkshire. Whether it's golf, tennis, or horseback riding, sport seems at its best in a New England setting. The rugged, jagged peak of Mount Mansfield tests the skill and daring of the mountain climber, rewarding him with the thrill of conquering heights. Over the roads and the trails that often follow the original paths of the Indians and settlers, vacationing New England hikes through the summer days. Up Cannon Mountain, the only aerial tramway in North America, carries passengers high above the treetops to a breathtaking view of the White Mountains, while below stretches a magnificent pattern of lakes, farms, fields, and deep pine forests. Upward from the base of Mount Washington, the Cog Railway gives an unmatched view of New England's famed presidential range, 
and a succession of spectacular impressions from heavily wooded slopes to Arctic vegetation above the timberline. From the pinnacle of Mount Cadillac on Mount Desert Island, green patches, pine-covered islands seem to float in the blue waters below. As far as the eye can reach stretches beauty, natural beauty. There is the beauty in the towering pine and spruce that runs down to the water's edge. The main coast, rock-bound with smashing, boiling surf that wets the faces of cliffs as they look out toward the broad Atlantic. Quiet, restful Stowe, a peaceful Vermont village, set like a gem in the Green Mountains. Nearby, Smuggler's Notch, a mountain pass through which Major Rogers sent his captives to Crown Point, is described in Kenneth Roberts' great book, Northwest Passage. The lower falls of the Amanusik River, where the starving remnants of Rogers' rangers failed to find the promised supplies. This is the New England of clear, cool mountain air, of crispness in every breath. This is the New England of plunging waterfalls that roar through the majesty of old trees. This is the New England of swift running trout streams. And deep inside New England's wooded fastnesses, at Moosehead Lake and Mount Kineo, the breeze comes heavy with the scent of evergreen. From the quiet of secluded spots, the fishermen go to their boats for a day with rod and reel. The thrill of the strike, of the catch, there's no thrill like it. Maine calls the red-blooded sportsmen of the world, calls them to freshwater fishing, to the haunts of grouse and woodcock, calls them to the hunting trails of deer and bear. At the end of the long, full day comes the pleasures of New England's friendly social life. Happy evenings that are climaxed by still new pleasures, new and different activities, and new and different joys around the crackling fires of the old-fashioned beach parties. Fun, fun and food for the happy, carefree visitors that come to enjoy New England's hospitality, good fellowship, and countless pleasures. At the end of perfect days, they relax, gaze into the magic flames of the brightly burning beach fire. The seeming sorcery of the flames recalls thrilling trips over New England's smooth boulevards of steel. The romance of the American clipper ships, memories of early folk and the tilling of the soil. The dancing flames conjure up the image of the old stone mill that grinds on and on throughout the years. The spirit of old Nantucket still living in whaling lore a century old. Again, the flames reflect the rugged beauty of the coast of Maine. And then the flames leap higher, the pulse quicken, as the spirits of those who built our nation relive their glorious days under the enchanting spell of the fire. Romantic history, colorful history of early America, of Plymouth Rock, a symbol of new world freedom, symbol of a nation's beginning symbol of New England.